important problem in probability is studying sums of random variables. Say I've got random variables that follow the same distribution. The question is, I create a new random variable by adding them. Then this new random variable, does it have the same distribution? The answer is not always. We're going to look at two random variables that have this property, the so-called additive property. First of all, the binomial. It's important results so it's stated as theorem. Let, let's um, present it for two variable case. Say we've got two random variables, x is binomial, number of trials is n subscript x, property p, y is binomial, that's the n, that's the p, x and y independent. Then the following conditions must hold that the p's here, probabilities, must be the same and that the two random variables are independent, then the sum of the two random variables, sum of the two binomials, is again a binomial where the new n is the sum of the two individual n's and the p is the same. For example, if x is binomial 5 and p is a half, and y is binomial n is 10, p is a half, then the new random variable by adding the two is going to be also binomial for the independent, with n being the sum of these two, so it's 15 and p being the same. This result says it doesn't hold just for the two variable case, it's say m number. So it's for n number independent random variables, so that's one of the conditions, such that each of these are binomial, which n subscript i, that means they can have different n's, although some of them could be the same n, but crucially they have the same p for each random variable. Then they're letting y denote the sum of the random variables, and they're saying that this new random variable y is binomial where the n is just to add, add up all the n's from the individual random variables and the common p. Okay, so we're going to prove this result and we're going to use the MGF method because it's a pretty slick method of proof for this and relies on some results that I've used uh, in previous problems. So let me define s to be x plus y. Then we want to find the MGF for s and the idea is what I recognize that the MGF for s is a binomial with that n and that p. Okay, this proof is going to be slightly long because on the way I'm going to also prove an intermediary important result, so that another theorem. So on the MGF for s, okay, by definition it's this, but we know that s is x plus y, so it makes sense to substitute for that because I know about the distributions of x plus y being binomial. So let's substitute that in then I think you could agree, forget the expectation sign, this here can be just split into the product of this times that. Okay, and then the next line is important. The expectation of the product of this random variable being e to that thing, and this new random variable of a function of y is equal to the product of the expectation of this function of x and a function of y, which by definition you can see it's the MGF of x and MGF of y. In other words, what we're saying here is that the MGF of the new random variable is equal to the product of the MGF for the each individual x and y under the given conditions, and that's a theorem. So we're relating the MGF of a sum to the individual MGFs. Okay, well, going from this third line to fourth line holds because we've used the result from problem 34 which was solved that if you have two, in this case two random variables x and y, then the expected value of a function of x times a function of y is equal to the product of the expectation of the uh, functions. And again in red here I've stated it's basically, we've just shown that theorem, we've proved this theorem. Now if we knew this theorem already I don't have to write all those lines out, I can just jump straight to this one. So what we're doing here, substituting MGF for X and MGF for Y being binomial, okay, which takes this form for the X and this form for the Y, where A is like that. I've written like this because I don't want to write this two times, not this big mess that way. Uh, this the MGF for the binomial was proved in problem 50. So it's just restating it here that if X is binomial parameters NP, then the MGF for the binomial is that. That was proved. Okay, so then you agree that this is just the same as this a to the sum of the two powers. But then you recognize like substitute a back in here so we can see it cleanly. 
like this looks like this is basically the same as this except for the n is that in other words it matches being a binomial with n being that the new n and the p being the common p and we're done okay some people ask about this theorem what happens if p is can p be different and it still be normal uh, still be binomial no because you can see in our proof here if um, if our p's are different then we're going to can't go from this step here to this step here so it won't be a regular binomial uh, and that's a much more difficult problem it's a research problem so us newbies can just forget about that since the proof is along the same lines let me give you another uh, give me another random variable that has this property that you're likely to see on new because poisson poisson also has an additive property so if i have two random variables each being poisson the parameter like that and they're independent then the sum of the two poissons is also poisson with a new rate parameter being the sum of the individual parameters example x is poisson rate parameter 1, y is Poisson rate parameter 3, x and y independent, then the sum of x and y is also Poisson rate parameter 1 plus 3 is 4. We've done it for the n is 2 case. This holds again for any number, a finite number of n random variables. Right, so our proof is much quicker now because we've basically proved the results about the MGF. Okay, so now we're going straight using straight result here. So the MGF for S is equal to MGF for X times MGF for Y. I could have wrote M here instead of E, M. Uh, Why don't I just do it right? Because I've got the pen right here. Um, so if I'm using theorem right away, I don't think I would have written this purple line like I have just done. Let me get this pen working. Okay, so this is what I'd have written. I'd have written this. Is that by the theorem that I've just proved for the binomial? Now I'm just using it. And then just substitute for MGF being a Poisson for X and MGF for Y, which is also a Poisson. So it looks like this, because I've proved that in problem 67. I'm just making a substitution here. Uh, a, T is that, because if I put that into there, it looks a bit of a mess. I want to make it quite clear, this is E to the T, and all this thing, minus one, not E to the T minus one up here. Okay. All right, then you can see that using this result that the powers here just add. So I have this. But then this is the form of an MGF for a Poisson, is what, how we identify it, but the rate parameter now is less in red. So we're done.